Yeah, good morning, everybody, from my side. Uh, I'm Simon from the Cochrane Academy in Nuremberg. I'm specialized since about 20 years in knowledge management and learning organization. And I was really happy and honored when um, Steffi and Anja asked me if I could provide a little talk about our experiences about uh, hybrid collaboration, like collaboration in a co-working scenario where people sit together and others are remote and to address the question if this is uh, just a hype that will be over after the pandemic or if this might be the new normal. So in the next 15 minutes, I will talk about that topic. Um, first of all, I will talk a little bit about myth. We heard a lot of myth at the beginning of the pandemic. Uh, I just uh, wrote a few down. Uh, I will talk about that in a second. Uh, I brought two cases of all remote companies, companies uh, with more than 1,000 employees that don't have offices or headquarters at all, what we might learn from them. Uh, and then I identified two uh, special new topics, at least for us new topics, um, that were raised during the year. One is the topic of new tools, new chat tools uh, that might support these hybrid collaboration use cases. And the other is just the aspect that uh, you need a lot of uh, hardware, also software, but also hardware to provide good quality in communication and collaboration across distance. And I will talk a little bit about that as well. We have a little poll and if you have time, question answers. Uh, there's this question answer field in uh, next to your live stream window. You can put it there. You don't see it immediately, but perhaps Oli or uh, Steffi, you can put the questions in the Teams chat and then I can like answer them in the talk. Yeah, the situation we faced at the beginning of the year was a lot of companies uh, switched from uh, no remote, a uh, lot of presence culture. It's very, very, people are used that people come to offices, the bosses are used that they see all their employees uh, to an all remote situation, like just a hard cut from zero to 100. Everybody was at home. And I just wrote uh, down all the, uh, all the sayings that I heard. Um, like uh, employees in the home office are not productive or remote work is bad for communication. Uh, remote work and hybrid work ruins the uh, corporate culture. Uh, remote workers are isolated and lonely. Uh, and also uh, the myth that uh, at home the whole day Netflix or YouTube is running and nobody's working. And I just uh, put you, since we only have a uh, little time, uh, one result from a study that was run last year. Uh, this is the State of Remote Work study, which is run every year by OLAPS. Uh, and there they found that uh, people who work at least part-time uh, remotely at home or somewhere else in a co-working space, they see a lot of advantages. And I think a lot of you will have experienced that as well in the last month. Uh, one is that uh, it's much easier to have a better work-life balance uh, there's less stress, uh, less time to work. Um, commuting is avoided. You don't sit a lot of time in the car or in the plane or in the train. And what I think is surprising is that a lot of people, like almost 80%, see an increase in productivity and better focus in their knowledge work. So uh, there are a lot of other studies. If you want to uh, just mark me on Twitter or LinkedIn, I can provide you with link lists. Uh, that support that also Fraunhofer IAO in Stuttgart uh, does such a report for Germany uh, a month ago. If you think about the new normal, in the middle of the year, I had the feeling the lot of companies thought uh, the old normal will be back again. Like everybody will come back to office uh, as soon as the vaccine is there, uh, we will switch back to the old normal. Uh, but I think we see early indications that this will not be the case, that the new normal will be different. Uh, there are like tech companies like Twitter, they allow people to stay uh, remote forever. But also traditional German companies like Allianz or Siemens, they are providing or preparing themselves for time uh, where massive amount of workers is not in the office anymore, but they work somewhere else. Perhaps at home is not the best place, but little locations close to their home, uh, co-working spaces, shared office environments, things like that. And also the, the Allianz, they're preparing to like get rid of a lot of their facilities because they think they won't need it in, in the future anymore. It's as much as a third of all the facilities that they have. So it's a good idea to have a look at companies who uh, work all remote for a long time. Uh, there's, for example, Automatic, it's the people behind WordPress, the uh, content management system that runs almost a third of all web pages in the internet. 
They have around 1,600 employees, I think. And there was a really interesting story that's told in this book, A Year Without Pants. I really uh, suggest that you read it. It's really interesting. Uh, um, a story about a Forbes article on new work. When, when new work came up in 2011, 2012, uh, Forbes wanted to write an art, uh, article about new work environments and they uh, tried to visit uh, Automatic. They had their headquarters at uh, Bay 52 in San Francisco, which is where also Dropbox lives and so on. Uh, and in this book is described that uh, the Automatic guys had real trouble to bring people to that office because normally nobody worked there anymore. They were so remote and everybody was uh, was happy to, to work remote that almost nobody was in the office just for some meetings and so on. So they had to invite explicitly people to come there when the guys from Forbes uh, came up. And I think about a year later they quitted the office, so they are office-less at the moment. They don't have any uh, facility as a company. And it's a, a 1.6 billion uh, US dollar company, so it, they are successful. It's not just like a, a network or... Uh, or a fun company. It's a real company, but in an uh, all remote way. The other uh, company I want to talk about is GitLab, uh, similar to Automatic. They are about 1,200 people. Uh, and they think about working in a more, uh, uh, in, a, in a way that you have shifts. Not everybody uh, is able to do it all remote. So they have uh, a concept uh, where they think about uh, no remote scenarios. This means people who have to sit co-located somewhere uh, where remote is allowed. You can uh, decide. Then hybrid remote where it's okay to have the combination of people being at home or in a co-working space and others being in the office up to all remote. And I put you in the in the slides in the footer. There are links um, because GitLab just published their whole management handbook where they describe uh, how they do that, uh, what effects it has on culture, what they say that the leaders should do to support this all remote culture uh, in this handbook and you can browse that freely in the internet. There are tips for remote leaders and tips for remote employees, uh, a lot of chapters about cultures, how they do hiring, how they do onboarding. Uh, I think this is a very interesting aspect when you're an all remote company, you can radically hire for the best talents you don't have to rely on uh, getting people from all over the world to Munich or New York or London or wherever. Uh, but you can say, okay, we want to have the best people no matter where they are and no matter where they want to work. Uh, they have a remote work manifesto. Uh, I have a video here why we re uh, work remotely. I can play it over the live stream, but uh, I suggest that you have a look at it because there's a message by a role that they established and it's called the head of remote. Uh, they dedicated a top management role wholly to this aspect of working remotely. And I think this is really interesting if you want to have uh, a, good, uh, a good setting, a working setting for uh, hybrid or remote work. There have to be people who, uh, who dedicate time and resource and money uh, on thinking about how this works best. It does not happen uh, out of the box and, and just as a side effect. Somebody has to deal with that. Yeah, the two pr uh, problems I want to address. One is uh, poor audio and video quality. If we are remote, like we are now, of course, I can't see you. I don't know how many people are watching. I don't know how you uh, how the sound is if I talk. I try my best, but I'm not sure. Uh, and this is totally different to the situation we have at home. Uh, at home or in the office, uh, we see in retina solution with our eyes. We listen in hi-fi quality, uh, 22 kilohertz. Um, we have the transition in, in, in TV sets or video streaming uh, services going from full HD to 4K, uh, 8K on the horizon. Uh, we have displays at home that are at least uh, 50 inches large. There are sound systems. We use tablets, uh, smartphones, notebooks, a second stream to Twitter, uh, a side effect and so on. If you look at the uh, remote work scenarios, uh, I often saw in the last month uh, that people at home have, have really shaky Wi-Fi networks. They don't use LAN cables to have uh, better bandwidths and uh, uh, better ping times and so on. Uh, there was very poor audio quality. People just used cheap headsets with very small microphones in it. Uh, you have all the tools like Zoom, Teams and so on with very poor audio codecs. They only provide 7 kilohertz, which is uh, similar to a phone. Uh, phone HD, like a G722 codecs and so on. 
Uh, and the participants, a lot of them who, who try to join video conferences and so on, just have their notebook or, or even worse, a tablet. And if you think about a real work scenario, we have a, a few field that's really broad. We can see what people are doing. Uh, I can see how they look. I see the content on the Beamer. And now everything happens on a 15-inch screen or something. Uh, and that this is not working in a very good way, I think it's it's quite logic. It's, uh, it's a no-brainer. So I think this situation has to improve. Uh, I don't think that we have uh, professional TV studios at home, uh, what, what radio stations or TV stations are doing, but what we saw in the last uh, six months, so to say, is a real upgrade in, in the equipment that people use at home. So, for example, uh, in terms of communication, I think everybody agrees that there sh shouldn't be a lot of email traffic. Uh, I was able to reduce the emails I get uh, to 5 to 10 a day uh, because of the switch towards chat tools, so everything is happening in chat. But that's software, it's not hardware. In terms of hardware, of course you have the aspect of having professional, uh, semi-professional uh, webcams. Uh, never use the webcams that are uh, implemented in your laptop, that's normally crap, um, really poor quality. Uh, the same counts for the microphones. It's not a good idea to use a microphone that's built in a, in a laptop. Uh, so you need to have headsets, uh, uh, hands-free equipment to, to talk, like this Chopra FreeSpeak uh, settings and so on. And there are also a lot of people uh, using equipment coming from the podcast or from the radio world, like audio interfaces, uh, USB mixers. Uh, the white thing is uh, the standard mixer that all the YouTubers use and also semi-professional headsets that have uh, 22 kilohertz uh, microphones uh, implemented where you can listen to each other similar to uh, sitting next, next to each other with a very low latency. In the mobile field, of course, I tried uh, to have a lot of meetings outside, walking through the forest or being outside in the park, getting some air. So you had tripods to, uh, to add your smartphones to uh, the earpods. Um, also, the headsets I'm using, I, I try to find one that I can use uh, to listen to music and to do audio conferences as well, because my headset before was not really good suited to, to listen to music. And also the AirPods, I use them a lot, uh, that come with the iPhone. And you can see also in the video domain, uh, the, the quality of webcams is also limited. So people begin to switch to also YouTuber style equipment, like uh, having uh, mirrorless cameras uh, and using um, shotgun microphones or wireless microphones for audio transmission. Uh, in the co-working locations, we saw upgrade in, in, in cameras and free speech environments like this meeting owl. We have a 360 degree camera around and the Panacast, which has 180 degrees or this pan tomb silt ca uh, cameras. Same counts for audio where you have this bigger Chabra uh, free speech environments and also this uh, Sennheiser system where you can put uh, four of these uh, thingies in a room and you can uh, freely talk with up to 20 people and everybody hears it uh, no matter if they are mobile solely or in another co-working room. Uh, second problem and then I come to the end is the problem that uh, in a co-located situation uh, you have uh, of course uh, informal communication, you go to have a coffee, you sit, you go for lunch, uh, you hear that somebody is talking about a problem, you can step in and uh, help. Uh, that's not happening online or in a, in a remote scenario and also what we in knowledge management call the serendipity effect. Uh, that things happen out of out of luck. It's just happening because people are close together. That's also relatively difficult to rebuild in a remote scenario. So in contrast to the normal chat tools like Teams, Slack, Metamost and so on, uh, we saw a rise of what we call spatial chat tools, like chat tools that give you a feeling of where you are in the room, uh, where you can walk through. It's not 3D or virtual reality. But you can see where people are and as soon as you come close you can talk to them mostly with uh, video conferences uh, and you can like open websites and share your browser and so on. So for a lot of companies we work with they uh, like you see in the lower left picture sort of rebuild the office that they have and with a click I can jump in their office and go there see who's there uh, go to the desk of somebody have a chat and if someone sees that I'm there he can come and we can have a chat and just with another click I'm I'm gone out of Paris and I'm back in Nuremberg again. 
So I think we will see. I just put you a list at the at the left side. These are the tools that we worked a lot with during the last month. And I think this is sort of a white space, a gap uh, that is not filled by uh, video conference tools like Teams or Zoom or WebEx or so. For that, uh, I think nobody can say really what the new normal will be like. It's too soon. Uh, I think we will see it during, during the next year uh, how everything evolves. But uh, as long as that, we are sort of, uh, everybody of us is on a learning journey. So I would close my talk uh, with the wish that everybody of you keeps calm and learns on. Uh, we have to deal with the situation and I think we will get out of it and have uh, developed a lot of new skills that we will need for that new normal as well.